Hello, Illuminated Souls. I'm Brie Andrioni. And I'm Tina Damar. Welcome to Shamans After Dark. Today, we'll be delving into the topic of manifesting our own landscape. This is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> yes. And first, I also want to say this is released on Beltane, May 1st. So Beltane blessings, everybody. Yes. Wonderful time of the year. Yes, it is. And this kind of brings us back a little bit to our episode that we released in February, Womb of Winter, when we kind of entered the stillness to dive deep and get creative about what we wanted to see in our proverbial spring. And now that it's spring, according to the Celtic calendar, Mm -hmm. we want to check in and see, you know, what's been germinating? What can we do to manifest all those seeds and dreams and things we had kind of percolating over the winter now All those how goodies. do you want to bring them forth exactly yes <laughs> yes and you know the word manifestation means to create something or turn something from an idea into a reality we can manifest a lot and some may not be for our highest and obviously we want to manifest supportive loving and beautiful energy in our lives And we want to be clear, we're not necessarily talking about material possessions here in this modern capitalist view of what manifesting is. But how can we manifest different outcomes for ourselves that break patterns that aren't working for us? And more importantly, how can we manifest patterns for ourselves that do work for us and the flow of our lives? Yeah, those are all great questions. Because I think sometimes when we think about manifesting, we're thinking about money and achieving things and all this stuff. But really, we want to talk about what we want to manifest for ourselves and our lives and that are really going to impact us in a positive and healing kind of way. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, how can we be sure that we're not manifesting more chaos in our lives versus helpful and supportive outcomes? Because, you know, manifesting additional chaos in our lives is something I think we do more than we realize. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I really realized this over Christmas. And when I was like, (laughs) what? I agreed to all these things and everybody else's plans and I didn't want to do half of it. (laughs) And it created so much chaos and stress instead of me being like, no, and having a healthy boundary. (laughs) You know, it was it was chaos and it was stressful and it took away from the joy that I generally find at that time of year and didn't allow for rest. And yeah, I really it was a big wake up call for me about. Yeah. Oh, okay. I allowed this chaos. I brought this chaos. I I manifested this chaos. You volunteered for I it. I did. I did. One hundred percent chaos. <laughs> so I'm totally gonna bang the drum of healthy boundaries again. And so when we don't have them, you know, we tend to overcommitting. You know, people pleasing, trying mm-hmm. to do it all, wear all the hats, be the perfect, you know, role. Is just be the perfect person, not making anyone upset. We're we're just spreading ourselves so thin. You know, when we understand we're not responsible for everybody's happiness, that's a huge eye opener. When we realize I am not responsible for my husband's happiness, I'm not responsible for my sons. Can I contribute to them being happy in a healthy, positive way? Absolutely. But ultimately, individually, they're responsible for their own happiness and achieving that and manifesting it in their own lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so without being aware, I think we can really just create all this kind of chaotic energy, which just adds to more stress and dis-ease. And then, you know, we complain about it without taking any ownership for the choices that we've made that <laughs> right. have gotten us to where we were. Because I know Tina hurt me many, many times <laughs> yes, I did. bemoaning all the things that were on my plate that I just hadn't said no to. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a big teacher for me about being like, I don't have to do this just because it may have been a tradition doesn't mean it's a healthy tradition I want to continue. It's not a healthy pattern for me that yeah. I want to continue. I need to find other ways of showing up and meeting people's needs in a way that also meets my own. Yeah, it's a tough one because, you know, if if people are are sort of not really depending but expecting something of you and you're like volunteer for it in order to please people, it, it's a tough tough place to be in because you don't want to disappoint people and that could be hard but because we love them right there's right there's a- the end result is you feeling overwhelmed and stress and, and um, overstretched and that's not good exactly so I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to look at what are we really manifesting in our lives because we not, may not be meaning to manifest this chaos or this you know extra stress in our lives But sometimes we just haven't picked up on the pattern that's there. Because it's a pattern, it's a routine, we don't even realize we're almost subconsciously doing it and continuing to be in this cycle of that, you know? And then also with this underlying desire of like, I don't want to make anyone upset with me. Mm. So if you have an intention to manifest something else, but underlying your emotional landscape doesn't really 
also vibrating with this jive. It, it's not going to happen because you're yeah. giving the universe two conflicting ideas of what it is you really want. You know, we're having that healthy boundary of being able to say, no, I know I need this. And this is what I want to manifest yeah. because it will help me to be a healthier, happier individual. And when I'm in that place, I'm able to be that healthier, happier partner, healthy, happier parent. I can make more time for just manifesting self-love in my life. Yes. Manifesting self-love. My gosh, isn't that the best thing to manifest? Yeah. Over like any kind of monetary you know, exactly. Object. So think about manifesting those new healthy patterns for yourself that right. will help you to achieve the things that you really want to have and experience in your life. Things that feel supportive. Yeah. Um, and you're so right. I mean, if we if we want to manifest something, but there's something that we haven't dealt with when, uh, within our psyche or our own experience that conflicts, you know, it's manifesting. I, this is my opinion. Manifesting is really an act of self-love because what it takes sometimes is to do some deep healing work on whatever is blocking you from whatever you want. So you have to really do the work. And then and then what comes out of that is a really wonderful thing. That's when you're actually almost manifesting without having to do like a humongous piece yeah. of manifesting because you've actually done the work to address you're under you're you're manifesting the chaos. You're manifesting this negative pattern in your life because there's something keeping you from moving out of that pathway or this pattern. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting. Sometimes when people are like, I feel like I never have enough money to pay my bills. Right. Because manifesting prosperity is something I see a lot of people trying to do. Yeah. Because you know, financial struggles are a thing that we all have to face mm -hmm. at some point. <laughs> you know, we roll yes. ups and downs. And that can be a really fear-inducing place. But if you're in the fear, and trying to manifest prosperity for yourself in some way that's healthy. Mm -hmm. If you're still in the fear, the uter that's going to override because you're feeling the lack and you're saying, I'm in a lack. And that's almost like you're calling in, in a way, the lack, the lack versus if you're coming to a place of like, I know I'm going to be okay. I'm, I understand this is thing. We're going to move through it, you know, and trying to to elevate that vibration that you're at. So you're not in that fear vibration. Yes. I mean, manifesting has become quite a big buzzword nowadays, but it, it really is an ancient practice. Um, you know, today we can create vision boards, healing grids, we can say affirmations if they work for you. Um, and again, healthy boundaries are so important in manifesting because they're just about clean, sovereign energy. And so if you're not, if you're manifesting without boundaries, it, it, it again is a conflicting message to the universe. So do what resonates for you. And boundaries help us to create space to manifest what we truly want in our lives. If we no longer want to give power over to toxic people or those who are not supportive, we have to be really clear about that. And you're no longer at the mercy of everyone else in taking the energy on and you want to put it into healthy manifestations instead. Absolutely. And again, we're not talking about manifesting the big house and the big car. We're talking about manifesting more love in your life, more compassion, mm -hmm. more self-love, manifesting balance. I can't tell you the number of people where it's like, don't feel like they have the balance or you're trying to balance all the things when it really comes down to like the realization that you've got to let something go because it isn't humanly possible to balance all everything. Like, right. We're trying to do more than we have the space to do. So finding that balance within or without manifesting health, creative force, wellness, and healthy relationships really want to talk about manifesting things of worth, not just objects. And, yeah. You know. Those are the things that really bring us joy and happiness. That's the reason why we're here. We're not here to, you know, obtain all the material possessions. Um, we're here to, to really live in a, vi a vital way. Absolutely. You know, like prayer and ceremony, lighting a candle, envisioning the manifestation coming to fruition and, you know, spending time with and working with our helping spirits who volunteer to assist us in manifesting these intentions can be really supportive yeah. when we're trying to manifest something, mm -hmm. especially something that's healthy and in our highest and best good. Yep. Uh, you know, attention and focus are just such a big part of changing our current inner landscape in order to change our outer landscape. You know, sometimes I really find if I'm in times of chaos or, or I'm kind of stale energy, I and I want to manifest something different for myself, simple act of cleaning my altar space where I do my daily devotions and everything mm -hmm. actually helps me clean my head space as well. It does. So that I can really tap into, like I realize, ah, okay, I need this reflection of my outer manifestation of stuff to match what I'm trying to now reorganize and shake the dust out <laughs> of my inner landscape. I like to change up my altar at least every season. Yeah. Uh, depending. And if something big comes up, I'll change it up again in that season. So, but yeah, it's, it's important to, to make time for self-reflection so you can really be clear about what you want, 
to to bring in or to release or shift when you're manifesting. And you want to get into that heart space, a real vulnerable place and a willingness to be honest with yourself and your helping spirits about what you really truly desire. I also think too with manifesting, there's an idea of like you just do the vision board and it's just going to happen. You have to do the work. There are the steps. Mm -hmm. Like you got to actually if you're in a really bad pattern, but it's a pattern you keep putting yourself into, like making those same bad choices for yourself. Yes. It's not going to change. We have to actually make an effort to change our inner landscape to kind of match what we want to bring into our lives. Like what, do we, what is it we really want? Like, And having those hard truths, those moments of accepting the hard truth of what am I doing that's contributing to me being in this negative, unhealthy pattern that I want to change? What is it that's really causing the underlying issue of what I need to shift in my life? And then there's other another thing too. There's some things that are not we're not responsible for that are more external yes. factors. I mean, like curses and things like that, hexes and all the kinds of things like that that can create a block in manifesting what you desire. So not not all of that is is your responsibility. But if you have a feeling that it might be something external and you it needs to be dealt with in the spiritual realm, then then do so. Absolutely. Or you notice you've done the things like you're like, I'm actively, but I, you feel like you're running up against a wall. That's where it can that kind of be that indicator of like, I'm trying to do this, all this stuff or make these shifts or I'm working real some, hard. Something else. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's blocking it. And that's definitely, you know, an opportunity to explore if there's some external issue going on there as well. Absolutely. And that's a really important point to bring up, Tina. So it's not just like, oh, I want to manifest money and expect that you're going to win the lottery the next day. You know, some, I, I really find if we're not clear with our intention and you're, it allows for too much chaos to get in there and you can't really manifest exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. what you're really wanting. So it's just so important to um, really be very, very clear. And if you have to make some changes in your physical day-to-day -day reality to help manifest that or to also just reinforce that that's what you're working towards, mm -hmm. that's important. And intention, again, it's so important. Being very, very clear and specific about what it is you're trying to bring into your life and manifest for yourself or to what change you're trying to create. So you don't get a lot of chaos. So you don't have this turbulent and then all of a sudden things feel worse yeah or you had it for a minute and then it just felt like it slipped out sometimes it can be really frustrating you know the really universe doesn't like a void and it will fill it <laughs> yes it <laughs> and will. that might not be something you want it to be filled with right so no. uh you just got to be clear really putting in that work and that intention and you know the universe doesn't generally just hand you something on a silver platter and say here's your millions of dollars you gotta do a little work yeah, sometimes uh, people who win the lottery end up with these horror stories that you hear about of like how it changed their lives in a negative way. And uh, everybody they knew wants money from them now. And, and that's, yeah, it's it's a very sad thing. So, you know, if you want to manifest getting healthy, you can't just sit on the couch and expect the universe to take care of it. You want to say, okay, I'm going to make this small step to uh, making a healthier choice for myself. And I think <laughs> sometimes when we think about what we want to manifest, we go really big. Yeah, go really big. And sometimes that sets us up a little bit to fail. Not all the time, but sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, if it's something that might need a few smaller steps for mm -hmm. us to manifest and achieve and feel good and keep that going, smaller can be better. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that we are stuck on the big, big stuff. And little stuff can, you know, it's like a domino effect. If you work on the little baby steps, like it can change everything. Like, you keep going the baby steps and they just kind of domino effect and like all of a sudden things have really shifted. Yeah. So what exactly are the changes you're willing to make? Write them down. Don't beat yourself up. Be compassionate with yourself about what you what didn't manifest. And it happens for seasoned manifestors sometimes, you know. Uh, your helping spirits may also be like, this isn't the best for you or it doesn't align with your contract. So you have to be also open with to that. Yeah. So Tina, what does spirit have to say about the concept of manifesting kind of in our modern lives? You know, this is kind of what we've been addressing today. Yeah, this was very interesting. When you wish for something to occur, sometimes it is best to ask your etheric allies for help in creating it while in partnership. It's important to be cl as clear as possible the root reason of the desire. As without that clarity, other conflicting and unwanted results can be unconsciously created. If one views manifesting as an act of self-love and as a victory of self-worth, the results can resonate more easily with the soul. Enriching one's life through seeking more joy, flow, play, and more connection with others can create a break from past patterns. It's important to note that manifesting is not just the concept of bringing in material possessions as this is only a small part of this magical cooperation between the physical world and the other world. In your capitalist society, challenging the idea of what abundance is will be fruitful in order to receive the benefits of the blessings that arrive to you. 
Yes, it is important to receive prosperity in your world in order to survive, but this is different from abundance. When the blessings of love, belonging, joy, and flow have arrived, the focus on prosperity as the only proof of, of abundance is actually taking away the power of the many ways in which one's life can be graced. So open your hearts with gratitude, the many unnoticed blessings that do fall at your feet. Here, the energy of that open-heartedness is the essence of manifesting a new landscape that works with and not against the flow of one's life. I love that. I love the piece that they said about how prosperity is just a small bit of abundance. Well, well prosperity, I mean, but you can be prosperous in relationships and in love. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like there's just so many places we can actually be, you know, where prosperity. So it's, again, just another reason why being so clear is so important because it can be yes. so underlying about what we really want to bring in. Yeah. What do the helping spirits have to say? for this with you. So my helping spirits uh, said manifesting something into one's reality is more than just thinking about or wishing for something to magically change or appear. Your actions and inner thoughts should be in alignment and are just as important in order to truly manifest what you want in your life. If your goal is to manifest abundance or prosperity, but inside you are filled with fear, feel undeserving, or don't truly believe anything will change, you're putting out conflicting energy to the universe. In order to truly manifest, you need to take steps to act in alignment with your goals, both internally and externally. You need to feel deserving and really think about what it is you truly want from this life experience that you may be lacking now. Sometimes what you may want to manifest isn't in alignment with your best and highest good or the lessons you're meant to learn in this incarnation. For those that are able to communicate with their helping spirits, asking them for guidance and wanting to manifest can help you gain clarity and insight about what it is you truly want to manifest. Modern society has lost its way and has confused abundance and the riches of life with power and money. There is more one can manifest that will truly deepen and enrich your life experience. If you look deeper and manifest those things in your life experience, your soul will be the richer for it. Hmm, I love that. I love that. Our website journey prompt is please show me an area in my life where I create my own chaos and how I might shift that to manifest positive change in my life. And you can find us at shamansafterdark.com. So please drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. You can also find Tina at threecrowshealing.com with the numeral three and myself at treehearthealing.com. There's also links to our personal pages at shamansafterdark.com. Until next time, everyone, keep on shining your light. 